The Manta Ray is an unmanned underwater vehicle, or UUV. It is not new to hear that the Navy has been experimenting with UUVs for years, considering their great ability to be a force multiplier and go places humans simply cannot. However, what is new is just how big the Navy's plans are for them. While it is unknown exactly when the manta ray went into full-scale development, we do know that it is a top-secret collaboration between Northrop Grumman and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA. Over at least the past five years, DARPA and Northrop Grumman have been building prototypes in top-secret facilities. It was only recently that the public got a glimpse at this futuristic vehicle. In April 2024, the U.S. Navy publicly announced the successful completion of the first round of real-world trials of the manta ray off the coast of California. During these trials, the manta ray performed a number of maneuvers, including diving, resurfacing, sailing on the surface, and changing course. While these developments might not sound like much, they are actually a huge step in the right direction, since it looks like the Navy is now actively testing some of its advanced capabilities at a secret weapons testing facility in California that was accidentally discovered on Google Maps. And what are these capabilities, you might ask? The Manta Ray is essentially built to be the world's first fully autonomous submarine. With a length of 33 feet and a wingspan of 45 feet, the manta ray has to be able to fit a ton of different gear on board. This is because the UUV is expected to make extreme journeys of thousands of miles or more all by itself without any humans on board. In order to simply sail, and much less fight. The manta ray needs a seriously powerful computer algorithm that has the equivalent computing power of sending someone to the moon. Seriously, there are a ton of different factors that have to be considered to make this vehicle viable. Having to take into account the effects of tides, currents, water pressure, underwater sea mounts, and other submarines, the manta ray has to have a very powerful onboard capability to receive, process, interpret, and act on this information. Therefore, simply navigating this beast is a challenge, considering a normal submarine would have over 100 people on board to do all these functions. In addition to autonomously steering itself, the manta ray must also be able to troubleshoot problems. Again, with no no onboard technicians, any problems with its electronics have to be troubleshot by the vehicle while on a mission. Think of it like trying to drive your car, but also popping the hood of the car at the same time. Sounds pretty difficult, right? Thankfully, the U.S. Navy has been able to do just that with the manta ray. However, that is not all they've done. Going back to the car analogy, not only has the Navy figured out how to drive the car and work on it at the same time, they also have the capability for that person to speak on a cell phone and use a pair of binoculars at the same time. Sensors. The manta ray has some advanced sensors, is what I'm getting at. While the exact sensor payload is highly classified, we can confirm some things that the Navy has done from what's been released to the public. The first of these is that the manta ray will have have a very robust sonar suite. Of course, having a sonar suite is a must for a submarine, but the manta rays will be different. When a sonar sends out a ping, the sound travels back to the ship, displaying the information on a screen. As of the making of this video, no military has a known or even claimed ability to use AI to interpret these results. Because of this, the manta ray's vast array of sonar suites, which will include a towed array per Northrop Grumman, will have to be interpreted by humans ashore, at least for now. However, several other systems on board are more autonomous. For example, the manta ray's navigation system is purely autonomous. We know the Navy wants the manta ray to be like a fire-and-forget-it submarine. This essentially means that the Navy puts pre-programmed waypoints into its navigation system. But doing that and letting the manta ray loose and hoping it gets to its destination is like trying to Kobe jump shot a basketball. Probably not going to work. How the manta ray 
keeps on course is by using a combination of GPS satellites, inertial navigation, and taking photos to compare it to heights in classified underwater charts to orient itself in the world. But that is not the coolest part about what it can do. While on a mission, the manta ray can anchor itself on the seafloor to await further orders or strike when the time is right. And if you thought that was cool, its propulsion plant will blow your mind. Because the manta ray could be gone for six months on end, sailors cannot just fill up its gas tank and send it on its way. On the other hand, the vehicle is too small to host its own nuclear reactor, and the absence of people on board negates that too. So, how will the manta ray keep moving? While traditional submarines utilize diesel-electric propulsion systems, the manta ray might incorporate two that are very unique. The first of these is called Air Independent Propulsion, or AIP. Essentially, the best way to describe AIP is that it's like the hybrid version of underwater engine systems. The way AIP works is that instead of having to surface to run diesel generators to charge the batteries on board, an AIP submarine can instead use supercooled hydrogen or similar fuel cells to generate electricity underwater to charge the batteries. By doing this, the submarine can stay up to several weeks underwater at a time before having to recharge its batteries on the surface to conserve its fuel cells. However, the manta ray is an unlikely candidate for AIP since it's doubtful that even the U.S. has figured out a way to miniaturize it enough for a submarine as small as it is. So, what will the manta ray use? Surprisingly enough, the manta ray will literally use the ocean itself to help generate energy to propel it through the water. How this energy harvesting technology would work would be as follows. First, the manta ray would need to travel from colder waters to warmer waters near the surface. This difference in temperature would heat a series of tubes filled with wax. The expanding wax would then compress a reservoir of hydrogen that would then create electricity, which would then power its batteries. And if you think that is science fiction, this technology has already been proven with the Navy's wave glider boats. So, just exactly how far along is the project? And when can we expect the first operational unit to hit the fleet? In 2021, the Department of the Navy awarded Northrop Grumman a sole source contract of $41,178,619 for a Phase II contract. This happens when an experimental weapon has to successfully test each of its various subsystems for proceeding to the next phase in the contracting process. How this looks in real life is there could be hundreds of individual data points and requirements set forth by the Navy that would each need to be performed at least once before getting signed off. So, what we saw this spring off of California is a perfect example of that Phase 2 testing in progress with the manta ray completing some of the more strenuous tests like maneuvering at certain speeds, diving to unknown depths, and surfacing within set parameters. How long the manta ray will be in this stage of development is unknown. If and when it progresses to the next stage of testing depends on a lot of things with some of the main factors being testing performance and funding. Fortunately for the manta ray, funding shouldn't be an issue during this renewed era of Cold War 2.0 the U.S. is currently experiencing. As far as how the manta ray has performed in testing, Google Maps gives us a pretty good clue that the UUV could be entering active service within the next few years. The military recently suffered a media gaffe when Google Maps accidentally revealed its location as a secret military base called Port Wynum. Wynamy, California. At Port Wynamy, the U.S. Navy does the field testing for most of its new weapons, which are developed at places like Dahlgren, Virginia. Recent Google Maps images show the manta ray moored at the base. But what does this mean? For the manta ray, the fact that the Navy is hosting it at Port Wynamy is a great sign. Because of all the various electronic warfare, communications, and sonar packages the Navy intends to put on the craft, getting retrofitted at Port Wynamy is a solid step in that direction. So, how exactly would the Navy use the manta ray in future conflicts? 
because of its rumored ability to travel more than 16,000 kilometers at a time. The manta ray is a super long-range asset, with the ability to reach far-flung corners of the globe that are too inhospitable or tight for U.S. submarines, the manta ray can go there. In addition to traveling far distances, the manta ray can assuredly dive deeper than unmanned subs. While the exact diving depths of the manta ray and U.S. submarines are closely guarded secrets, the fact that the manta ray is much smaller and unmanned means it can withstand greater pressures than any other U.S. submarine. Having this capability, it can dive deeper to the ocean floor. But if there are no enemy submarines at extreme depths, then why go there? Contrary to popular belief, one of the main ways information travels from country to country is via undersea cables. Tapping into those cables is a huge deal and can yield a ton of useful information. The fact that the manta ray can moor to the bottom and reach extreme depths is a clear indication that the Navy can and will use it to tap into enemies' underwater communications. But what about the manta ray's offensive capabilities? As of the making of this video, there are no concrete concrete plans to equip the manta ray with weapons, at least not yet. Right now, the Navy intends to use the manta ray as an intelligence gathering tool to sneak into enemy ports, tap cables, and extend the Navy's reach to far-flung places. So until more advanced IA is developed, it's going to be a while before squadrons of automaton-type robots are filleting fleets across the world. And what weapons will it use to do this, you might ask? While Navy leadership has been hush-hush about putting torpedoes on the manta ray, they have been open about the fact that they want to put mines on it. Having the manta ray turned into a covert mine layer is pretty ingenious, considering it could sneak into an enemy harbor, wait for the right time, lay the mines, and leave. Because of having this and other capabilities, the manta ray can take some of the most dangerous missions off the plates of manned submarines, so they can focus on hunting ships, shooting tomahawks, or deploying SEAL teams. In addition to freeing up assets, the opportunity cost is much lower. Losing a submarine entails a direct monetary loss of a billion dollars or more, over a hundred sailors, and the time and money it takes to train a crew. With individual and unit-level training taking several years from a completely green crew, losing even one submarine is a big deal to the Navy. If a manta ray were lost, the time and money to replace it would be magnitudes less. Because of this, we will likely see squadrons of manta ray UUVs hitting the active fleet as soon as it becomes operational. Once that happens, no other country will even come close to the U.S. as the world's premier submarine force. Bye for now!